because there's always some smart aleck that wants to ask about friction or drag. And quite right, too, because the real world does have friction and drag. So this is an idealized roller coaster without friction or drag. And I want to be very specific about my roller coaster and its, its uh, design. It's going to start off with a high, high hill, and then it's going to dip, it's going to have a loop, it's going to have another high hill, but not as high as the first one, and then it's going to come down to some finish line. And I'm going to draw a dotted line across the bottom of this page to show where the ground is at this amusement, at this amusement park under this roller coaster. Of course, the ground's important because we have to talk about heights for gravitational potential energy. And I want to talk about some specific points on this roller coaster. So at this height up here, or this position over here, rather, I want to discuss the height of this one as being 20.0 meters. And at this position here, 20 meters, that's pretty high. This position here, is going to be 3 meters. And at the top of this loop, when you're upside down maybe, we're going to be at a height of 13 meters. And when we get over to this hill, which I know maybe it's not obvious on my diagram, but it's definitely shorter than the starting hill, it's going to be 15.0 meters. And of course, over here at the very end, we're going to be at a height of zero meters. Okay, so a little roller coaster. And you know that if this was the start and this is the finish on a real roller coaster, after you get back to the loading dock, you know, like a Canada's Wonderland or, or whatever it is, you get, at, off of the, uh, you get on at the loading dock into the little cars, and then you hear that, uh, you know, the motor goes chug, 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 and the, the chain pulls you up to the top of the first hill. So what we're neglecting here is the fact that there's some work done, some force over a distance or over a displacement that takes place in order to put energy into this roller coaster and take it up to the top of the hill from the loading platform. Okay, so that's the part we're going we're gonna to cut out here this time, okay? We're just talking about the coasting part of the roller coaster, just the coasting, and it's idealized with no friction or drag, so it's kind of cooked. So back at the beginning, we've got a coaster car. My black marker is dying. A coaster car. It starts off, and it's going to have an initial velocity equal to 0 0.500 meters per second. So it's just moving at the top of that hill. You know, half a meter per second. That's not that fast for a roller coaster. And it's got a mass of 500.0 kilograms. And I want to go through this roller coaster now before we start. And I want to say, this is position A. I want to call this position B, position C, position D, and position E. OK, so five distinct positions on this coaster. I want to start off with a question, now that we finally got the diagram done. The question is, find the total mechanical energy for this roller coaster. is to find the total mechanical energy for this roller coaster. And we said before that E total is equal to EG plus EK. Is there a point on this roller coaster where we have enough information to find the total mechanical energy? And if so, what point is it? Point A, B, C, D, or E? Yeah? Um, I guess you could find it for point A because you have the velocity, you have the mass. Yeah. Technically, you could find Oh. It would be the same as gravity. Well, there is, gra there is kinetic energy this time because we got 0.5 oh, meters like it per tells second. You, it would tell you the kinetic energy, oh. but you know that because there is no kinetic energy at the top, it will be flipped and it's the gravitational potential. Well, th this time there is kinetic energy, though. Like if it, if it was like perfectly stopped, 
I'd say absolutely. But this time it's not perfectly stopped. Not like the, the projectile. This time we're not perfectly stopped. That's the twist. So yeah, so we, now we can find kinetic energy. You're right, Part A is the, or position A is the start, place to start. So I can say E total, if I want to find it, is equal to 1 half M. We can use the velocity at position A squared plus mass times acceleration due to gravity times, you know what, instead of saying delta dy at position A, that's a lot of symbols all at once. Do you guys mind if I just switch it to height at position A? Because it's the same thing. I'm, I'm going to switch over to height, okay? So height at position A. And we can start plugging in our values. One half, the mass is 500 kilograms. I'm going to drop off my trailing zeros again just for space issues times VA squared, which is 0 0.5 meters per second squared, plus, I guess again, 500 kilograms, times 9.81 meters per second squared, times the height, which is 20 meters. And I need a little bit of help. Can you calculate the first bit for me and then the second bit? Anybody got the kinetic energy? That's the first bit. Sarah? Oh, I have the second bit. You have the second bit, okay. Um, 98,100 joules. Anybody got the first bit? The, the uh, kinetic energy. Yeah? 125. Is it 125? I got 62. Oh, oh, got, right. Okay, so 62.5. Yeah, you got to square that velocity or else it'll mess you up. 62.5 joules. And that, <laughs> that tells me this is very lopsided. Which is contributing most of the energy at this point? EG or EK? Yeah, this thing is not going very fast. I mean, it's massive. 500 kilograms, that is a massive thing. But it's not going very fast. So I, we can't quite say zero, but it's, it's not very much by comparison. So if we want to find out the actual total mechanical energy, let's add them together. It's actually a nice one to, to add together because there's zeros in the placeholders here, and it's 62.5. So you get 98,162.5 joules is the total mechanical energy.